Hello everybody. Today I'm just going to uh, do a full shine on my Allen Edmonds McAllisters. If you can see, uh, they're pretty scuffed up and they just uh, really need a good polishing. Right? They're obviously still in pretty good shape, but uh, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. They're both done. Doesn't it look awesome? Okay, the uh, subjects here today are my Allen Edmonds McAllisters. These are actually the first Allen Edmonds that I purchased new. Um, and in my opinion, I've done a full review on these shoes and a one-year review. And in my opinion, for $245, Allen Edmonds always has sales. Not always, but, you know, uh, almost always has sales. Um, I think they're a great deal. But one of the things that you may know if you've seen my other videos, these shoes were a quite a bit lighter when I purchased them. The color of these is ox blood. And the original color is actually even lighter than that. Um, I can't give you an example of the original color, but the point is I've darkened them all over and especially here, um, you know, on the wingtips on the toes. And one of the ways I've done that is actually with the mirror gloss, sapphire mirror gloss. This is actually a black, um, you know, colored polish there, okay? And it did the job of darkening, but the downside to the darkening of the shoes is, can you see, obviously, areas like there? When you scuff the shoes, you'll scuff off the the darker color wax revealing a lighter color and you can even see here after you wear them a lot you know places like that where the shoe flexes it will flake off a little bit so um i'm going to just uh i think first uh clean these off with saddle soap then use uh, here's the materials i'm going to use today uh, so i think the first step is going to be the the saddle soap i've got a full other video on that on what it is and how to use it uh, i think i'm going to probably use some of the sapphire reno mat this is like a you know a cleaner, I guess I would say. It smells like a solvent and it will remove wax where saddle soap will not remove wax. And then I'm going to uh, use the sapphire. And this is the Renovateur. This is a mink oil based um, uh, a moisturizer and I am becoming much more diligent with moisturizer if you've seen the last video that I just released which was a uh, cracked uh, polo Ralph Lauren crack repair so I want to be very diligent in keeping my shoes moisturized to help prevent that down the road and then I'm going to use the sapphire the medal d'or uh, this is the cream soft cream polish with a lot of high pigment in it and then I'm probably going to finish, oops, I'm probably going to finish off uh, definitely with a Medal Dior mirror gloss. This would be for the toe caps, and I may even use the, uh, the neutral in the other areas, okay? All right, so let's go.
Now, by the way, I've got, this is the uh, brush I use for, for darker shoes, right? For the, you know, actual buffing off the polish. Um, but I've got a separate one I'm going to keep here, a lighter colored one. And for example, I'm going to use it here to get the soap out of the, I'm going to use this here to get the soap out of the broguing and out of the welt too. for the Saphir Renault mat. Uh, this stuff is a little stinky and for this I'm gonna I would you know roll your shirt sleeves up for this part here. Uh, it's just a little bit messier and, and you know we're gonna be taking off some polish so the objective on this part here it's like I said to be able to remove because I, if I start to polish this has been scuffed so many times it's gonna look too blotchy so I'm gonna try and remove some of that which I wouldn't do every time I polish. Now this stuff does settle if you notice so you gotta you, know, you have to shake it up. And I'm going to use an old dirty rag, you know, old filthy dirty rag that I just use for stuff like this. And you can see that it's fairly clean, so you'll see some of the color come off. And that jar is that jar's top heavy. Be very careful. I have knocked it over before. Okay, that actually made me almost out of breath. Um, put quite a bit of effort into that. And stripped, like I said, really just just the wingtips down. Okay, so that's good there. Uh, and then uh, just basically once you've finished using this, the Saphir Rental Mat, then wipe the shoes down with a damp cloth. So that is just to get any of the, um, you know, the, the solvent residue off. Now the conditioner. It's really important to condition leather, uh, keep it moisturized so it doesn't crack. After it cracks, it's, you know, the damage isn't done. So the, one, the time you want to moisturize leather is when it's in good shape, okay? 
and uh, mink oil. Um, this is mink oil. Based mink oil comes from mink, uh, um, the fat, uh, when they actually process mink for the furs. You know, in other words, the fat the, in the defleshing process. Sorry if that's gross. Uh, this is a different rag than the one I used before. And by the way, here's an area that I do like to always make sure that I get when I moisturize shoes. Right here, the piping. I'd actually take the shoe tree out. Get a little bit on there. Because this is one of the areas where I see old shoes, they'll crack a lot, is right here, this piping. So let's make sure that we moisturize that real well, right? And by the way, I don't think it hurts to get the lining either. There we go. That one is done. Okay, so now I'm finished moisturizing them, nourishing them with the run of a tour. Um, now what I'm going to use next, uh, and I'm going to show you two different colors. So the sapphire, uh, this one here is a number eight Bordeaux. And this one here is the mahogany. So I'm not sure if it shows up on video. I'm using the Bordeaux, and the difference between these two basically is that the mahogany is on the browner side of this, you know, burgundy, merlot, oxblood range of colors. This one is a little more on the browner side, this one is on the purpler side, and, and it's darker, and that's what I want, so that's why I'm going to go with this one, okay? So just to compare the two, Kirby Allison has a great video. Um, uh, um, I forget the name of it. I'll put a, a link in the description and he shows all of these different um, shoe polish colors and uh, You know how they you know the tones that they actually produce he has a great video about that compares them for Allen Edmonds shoes by the way Okay, so now by the way, I do have uh, I just use cotton t-shirts I do have one that I use for applying color and then I have a separate one that I use for only for applying you know the mirror shine on the toe caps and um, you know, I just try to keep them separate. So I've had people ask about this, um, and I'll show you how I wrap my hand. So I'll show you how I wrap my hand around the towel, and I'm gonna use a spot that I already used that same color on, okay? So you just have the shirt like this, pull it back, okay? So I just give it a twist, okay? That puts a twist in it, and then around the wrist, once, twice, and then, you know, you can wrap it around your thumb, you can wrap it around these two fingers to get the length right. Then come back over here and cinch it up a little bit. You want it nice and tight and smooth there. Okay.
set up while I do the other shoe. Now that it's had a few minutes to set up. This is my darker, denser brush. This one's a little longer, see, so I have to go around my pinky. progressive coat I'm gonna put less and less and less I don't want to go put too much here where it flexes because as you can see it does crack off if you get it too thick where the shoe flexes I'll let that set while I do the other shoe and I've got some just cool water here nice cold water Drunk. Let that set up while I do the other shoe. This is called the Spit Shine or a Mirror Shine. The water helps to smooth and cure the wax. See how that's coming up already? It would be this would be harder to do if there was no wax on it. In other words, if this is a brand new shoe, this would take much longer. Let's see, another coat. Let's see, it dulls down. A drop of water. Shines up. You see how that works? Okay. Once again. Wax on, it dulls down, drop of water, it shines up it's like magic. Light pressure at this stage. Dulls down. Drop of water, shines up. And 
we'll let that set up while I do the other shoe again. I usually just show the left shoe, but I think in this case, this only has that one coat on it. I'm going to show you one more time. This is the right shoe. Okay. It's got one coat. I put more wax on my finger. You know, it's really good there, but it needs work there around the broguing and the holes. The wax sometimes doesn't stick as well to some places as it does in others. Here's another trick. If you need more wax, put it on your finger. Your finger's not as porous as the cloth, so you can apply more wax to the leather just with your bare finger. I'm gonna let that set up a little more. Back to the left shoe is looking pretty good. You see up in here though, versus the tip of the toe. I'm gonna work on up here. Very light pressure. I don't want to take the wax off. I want to smooth it down flat. I'm getting the problem areas around those broguing, and I don't know why. I'm also looking at the texture. Can you see the texture there? It's still got some orange peel, some bumpiness, because that's because you're seeing the raw leather. Whereas like on the tips of the toes, you don't see that. So that tells me there's needs more wax there. See that? Now what might be happening there is, I'm wondering if some of the solvent got trapped in the broguing like either the saddle soap or the run of a tour and is now coming back out set up and dry. Hopefully some of the, the whatever's in there is going to dry out.
not taking wax. toe cap has absolutely frustrated and pissed me off. Um, I remember when the shoes were brand new, I had a lot of trouble getting the, the, the clear to stick. So using some drastic measures here, I got a good thick coat on there. Okay, now you can see here the uh, wax has all been removed. The whole mirror gloss has been removed. And can you see in the center of that medallion, there's an area that has a little bit of a lighter color. And I really can't for the life of me figure out what it is. I have a few different theories. Maybe there is some solvents left over from the tanning process. Maybe it's because of the holes in the broguing that something gets down into those holes and is coming back out. Um, I tend to believe that it's something from the manufacturer of the shoe because when these shoes were brand new, that same exact spot, only on this one shoe, I had a very difficult time getting the wax to stick. So here's a solution. After I removed everything well, with the rental mat and then wiped it down with a clean uh, damp cloth, then I let the shoe sit for 24 hours uh, just to dry out and have any solvents, waters, anything else dissolve out of the shoe or evaporate out of the shoe. So I let it sit for 24 hours on the workbench uh, and then came back to it the next day and applied uh, two generous coats of the Saphir cream polish because I knew that would stick. That soaks into the leather more. So almost like painting a car when you put down a base coat and you sometimes you mist it on to get it to stick and then you build up successive coats on top of that.